So uh, I'll use red on uh, this function. We'll do the derivative. Okay. So we'll have red is f prime. So what kind of things do we use to help us draw f prime? Come on, guys. Yes, horizontals. Horizontal tangent lines. Okay. Here's a horizontal tangent line. There, 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 there. So what do we know is true about f prime at those places? Zero slope. Zero. So the original function f has a zero slope. The derivative has a value of zero. Okay. It's it's hard to disconnect the. We're looking at slopes so often that when you look at f prime, you start looking at the slopes of f prime. But that's not what. That's not something we can. It's not really useful quite yet. Okay. When the slope is zero, the y value of the derivative is zero, which means where is the derivative when the slope is zero? On the x-axis. That's an x-intercept for the derivative. Okay? Zero, 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 and zero. Okay. So, what would we say about the uh, the slopes over here? They're positive. They're positive. So the derivative needs to be. Positive. Not have a positive slope. F prime doesn't need to have a positive slope. Its y value, its actual value, the value of the derivative, needs to be positive. So we need to have values that are above the x-axis. Okay. For now, when you're thinking about the derivative, the value of the derivative, think of the y value. The y value is what tells you the slope of the original function. Okay. It's a really a difficult thing for most students to do at this point. That's why we do this. Partially why we do this. So we need to have Positive y values, right? Y values that are up above the x-axis. Okay? And over here, what kind of slopes do we have? Negative. negative. So we need to have negative, right? Negative values somewhere down in here. And over here we have positive slopes. We need to have positive slopes or positive y values. Uh, here we have uh, negative y values need to be uh, what we're seeing. Positive y values here. Okay? After this zero slope, what kind of slopes do we have after that? Positive. positive slopes, zero slope, and then positive, positive slopes again. And then negative. Positive slopes again. So we have positive slopes here. We have zero, and we have positive slopes again after that. So we need to have positive values yeah. there. Okay. And after this zero, we again have negative slopes, negative y values for the derivative. Okay. So if we put all this together, we have positive slopes, positive y values. And after that, we have negative ones. Okay. We know we can't go forever in this direction. Why? Because we have to come back and have a, a slope of zero. A, a y value of the derivative needs to be zero. So we need to come back up here. Okay. We need to come up here, and it needs to come back down and have a zero slope. Come down and come back up to have a zero slope. It needs to come up and back down and have a zero slope. But then after that, it needs to keep having positive slopes. And it has to come back down and go into the negative or negative slopes. Okay. So like I said, it's difficult to separate uh, the, the y value of the derivative and the slope of the derivative. The slope of the derivative is something we, we want to know about, but also uh, it doesn't have anything to do directly with the slope of the original oh. function. Okay. So we just drew f prime, so let's answer some questions about f prime. Uh, in the first column, sketch the graph of f prime. Mark the x-intercepts of f prime. What do these zeros tell us about the original function? What do those zeros, that, 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 and that, what do they tell you about the original function? Possible locations of extrema. Okay, good. So, yeah. No, those big words just work. Yes. Would the um, this is kind of off topic. Uh huh. Would the um, degree of a function show you like how many concavities there's going to be? Uh, it's certainly, possibly, they give you a maximum number of concavities. Okay. Okay. So this could be like a degree four. Okay. Uh, a degree, well, let's see. Let's say a degree two. Let's start with a degree two. What kind of concavity could a, how many concavities could a degree two have? One. One, because it's a parabola. A parabola is always going to be concave up or concave down forever. You know, the interval from negative infinity to infinity. How about a degree three? No. Two. 
two, it could look like this, right? Like that, have two extrema, and therefore two concavities. Okay, so at most it could have one less than its degree. But this could be a degree four. Let's see how many concavities it has. Here's a degree, here's a concavity one, uh, two, three, so that turns out to have three. Um, but if this degree four didn't level out like that, then we could possibly have one or, we could have one concavity for a degree four. If it just kind of looked like a, a big parabola, it didn't really get bendier than that. Have one instead of three. Okay, so possible locations for extrema, that's what the zeros of the uh, first derivative tell us. Okay. So in the second color, we're going to draw f double prime. Well, let's, let's think about this. How did we help ourselves to draw f prime, the original derivative? What did we use to help ourselves? We found slopes of zero on the original function. On the original function. And that so if we want to find, if we want to help ourselves find the, the derivative of a function, any function, it's helpful to find the zero slopes, right? So if we want to find the derivative of this red function, which just happens to be the derivative of the original function, it's going to be a very similar process, right? We're going to find the zeros there, zero slope, zero slope, zero slope, zero slope, zero slope. Okay. We're going to use those to help us draw the derivative of that red thing. Okay, which is the derivative of the original function. Okay, so we have x-intercepts there, 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 there. Uh, happen to have an x-intercept there and there. Okay, so we're trying to draw the derivative of this red thing. Okay, so what about the slopes here? Negative. They're negative, negative. so we need to have negative slopes there. And here, positive, positive slopes there, so we need to have these positive slopes up in there. Here we have negative slopes, positive slopes, negative, negative slopes, positive, positive slopes, <laughs> negative slopes, right? Positive slopes, negative slopes. Uh, and after that, it just it keeps on being negative slopes. Okay? So negative slopes coming up here, 0, 2. Now we need to cross over into the positive slopes. Okay, come back down to a 0 slope negative slopes, back up to positive slopes, back down to zero, or to negative slopes, and this for a second have positive slopes, and then negative slopes again. Okay. In the second color sketch, f double prime, can you make a connection between the concavity of f and the value of f double prime? So, for example, when f is concave up at x equals c, then f double prime of c is, okay? There's a connection between, say, being concave up means that f double prime is concave down. Concave down. Let's, uh, so if the original function is concave up, then, then f double prime might be concave uh, up, or concave down. Well, I want you to, this is not an easy thing to, to visualize and to just like get it, right? So helping you as, as much as I can. It makes complete sense to me because I have done it a few times and I've looked at it this way, okay? It's really helped me to solidify this idea, okay? Uh, so don't check out, stay with me. You got it. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, here, let's, let's do this. Here, concave down, okay, and it looks like it stops being concave down uh, right about there, okay. Uh, let's do some more concave down. Let's say concave down right about there, and stops being concave down right about there. Uh, concave down here to there, and it's concave up after that. And then it looks like it starts being concave down again, and then concave down for the rest of the time. Okay. Remember, we, we've already had a discussion about where concavity changes. Okay. What did we say about those points, those points of inflection where concavity changes? Where the slope is steepest. Where the slope is steepest. Okay. Now, steepest is a little bit not specific. 
Okay? Steep means really slanty. Okay? Now, if it happens to be slanty and negative, okay, so let's look at, at what we have here. Here, it stops being concave down. That's where the slope is the steepest. Okay? And after that, those slopes will be less steep. Okay? So the slope is its steepest, which means the derivative will have an extreme value, right? That's the like the biggest, steepest value that the slope is going to have. So what do we see in the derivatives? Okay, negative slope, biggest negative slope, yeah? The biggest negative slope, you know, on this interval. Biggest negative slope around. Before that, they weren't as steep. Uh, they, they were negative, but they weren't as negative. And after that, the same is true. They are negative, but not as negative as this one. So if we look at the derivative, negative slopes, okay, negative slopes, negative slopes, negative slopes, negative slopes, biggest negative slope. Okay. After that, negative slopes, but they're just not as negative as this one. So what are we seeing here? Negative what are we slope. describing? It's a minimum. It's a minimum. It's a minimum of the derivative. Okay. It is the most negative slope, the quote smallest slope that there is on that interval. Okay. If you're a big negative number, you're a small number, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So. Negative slopes, this is the biggest negative slope or the smallest value of the slope that we'll find on that, on that interval, right? So uh, the, the value of the slope has bottomed out and has gotten the most negative that it possibly will get, and now it starts to, starts to get bigger again. It starts to increase. The value of the slope starts to increase. The slope gets less and less negative, so therefore like a bigger and bigger value of the slope. It goes through zero, that's bigger than a negative number. It goes beyond that and starts to have uh, bigger and bigger positive slopes. The original function, bigger and bigger positive slopes until it gets to its biggest positive slope over here. And if we get to the biggest positive slope, we're at a maximum of the derivative. And if we get to the biggest negative slope over here, we're at a minimum of the derivative. We get to the biggest maximum, or the, the biggest positive slope over here. We're at a maximum of the derivative, minimum of the derivative. When we have a negative slope, that is the biggest negative slope. We're at a maximum when we find again the biggest positive slope here, maximum value of the derivative. Okay, that would be the same for f double prime as of or if you're thinking about f prime, correct? Right, f double prime and f prime have the same kind of connection. Uh, so, <coughs> excuse me. So, in this yellow, right, we've traced over this in yellow, mm -hmm. this is all concave down, okay? And it stops being concave down when the slope is its smallest, its most negative. Does that make sense? Yeah? Yeah. Let's say that again. Okay, so it's concave down all throughout here, we can see that from the picture. When it becomes its most negative or its steepest, okay, that's where it stops being concave down and starts being concave up. Okay? Well, that will happen when it's its steepest or, or when it has its, its most negative value, which means that the derivative, the value of the derivative itself, will be at its most negative, will be the smallest that it can possibly get. Because before that, its slopes were not as negative. And after that, the slopes will be not as negative. Well, technically bigger. Okay. So here's the smallest slope that we can see around. Okay. All right. If we want to find where that place is, where the derivative has a minimum, or horizontal tangent line, then we want to find the derivative of that and find the zeros of, of that derivative. The derivative, of the derivative. Okay. So there it is. And all throughout here, okay, all throughout here. The, uh, the, the slopes of the derivative are negative. Okay? The 
the slopes are negative. So the value of the derivative is negative. The value of, of, uh, of f double prime is negative. And then it zeroes out where the derivative is at its minimum, and then it crosses over into the positive. Okay. So you can see that, let's just change that to concave down. Okay. When the original function is concave down, f double prime is negative. It's concave down. And at this point, the derivative itself gets as small a y value as possible, and therefore has a minimum, which means it has a horizontal tangent length. So we take the derivative of the derivative and find its zeros. So if the function is concave down, then the second derivative is negative. If it's concave up, then f, f double prime is Here's positive f two. double prime, or here's f. It's concave up, and f double prime is positive. Positive. <coughs> okay. So what do the zeros of f double prime? Here is a zero f double prime zero zero, zero. Let's say. No, possible. it's not one zero f double prime. Right, about f prime. What does it tell us about f prime? That's where the points of inflection point. Possible, Possible max or minimus. What does it tell us about f? Points of inflection. Points of inflection. Possible. Possible. Points of inflection. So the second derivative test, so we're going to state the second derivative test, we're going to use the second derivative test just like we used the first derivative test. All right. Take a look at, at f. This is the original function, f. Yeah. The whole point of the second derivative test, just like the first derivative test, is finding a maximum or minimum. Finding maximum and minimum. Okay. Well, here's the maximum. How do we typically find? Like how do we? What's the process for finding the maximum or minimum? What's the first thing we would do. Find the derivative. Find critical numbers. Find the places where the derivative is zero. Zero. And then rare occasions we'll have an undefined derivative, and that will tell us that we have a maximum or minimum. Okay. So most often we'll find where the, the derivative is zero. Okay. Well, here we go. The derivative is zero. The derivative is zero. F prime at some at some point is a critical number. Is zero. Oh, I keep forgetting this class. Okay. Yeah. Um, Test time. Test time. Test time. And f double prime is well, what kind of values does negative. f negative? Let's say it's negative. Okay. Well, if it's if it's if f prime is zero and f double prime is negative, what kind of concavity do we have if we have f double prime Back. is negative? Concave down. Concave down. Concave down for negative uh, f double prime? Yeah. So zero slope, concave down, meaning f double prime is negative. What do we have at that place? Maximum. And maximum. And vice versa. For the other. F double prime is positive. We have a minimum. Oh.